Thanks, just a second. Scoop. Tony, you got a copy? Okay, we're all set. We can hear you loud and clear, Paul. All right, thanks. Yep. Sorry, I'm a little late. No, you're right on time. Um, yeah. Right. yeah, just got done selling. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. We're going to call this meeting to order. Those present are me, Robert, Noah. So I think we're missing Travis, right? He'll be about 30 minutes late, he said. Um, who else is there? Are we missing someone else too? I'm missing Matt. Matt and Travis. Okay. Um, approval. Of minutes. Yep. Mo I, I, I motion to approve the minutes from our February meeting as they were submitted. I Anyone? second that motion. All in favor? <clears throat> uh, unanimous. I'm going to email Matt the link. He can't find it. All right. Um, uh, Randy, do you have any new info for us? Harbor Masters report. Let's see if I can get this to work right. <clears throat> Again. Uh, uh, we've developed a, well, we have contracted with uh, Mooring Info to have all the moorings in the harbor GPS mapped. And once it's fully operational, we'll be able to do applications and billing right online. That's the big news from my office. Cool. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't seem like there's much really going on. Getting that squared away, nothing shellfish related, I guess, huh? Pretty quiet. If everything goes right, I'll be headed to the state's shellfish warden school next month, as long as I don't get bumped off the list. The state's only allowing six people to go. For now, I'm on it. That could change. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, the uh, council liaison report. Don, do you have anything for us? Uh, no, nothing, nothing new other than the agenda items. I have an update for you on the budget. I think you probably saw some material on that. And, uh, there was also some feedback from the coastal waters, uh, and harbors committee meeting that just, uh, closed before, uh, this meeting. And I, I can update on that after, uh, Noah does his update on, uh, suggestions for the parking improvement, if you like. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. That would be great. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, moving Matt's, on to Matt's now here. Yep. Cool. There he is. I'm here. Sorry, guys. No worries. Uh, moving on to item six, old business. So we have the discussion here. Uh, Robert went through and looked at the tide charts for this year and chose some dates and everything. I have that uh, document right here with all the times. So I'm going to type that up. And Toady, do you want me to email that over to you? And then would it be easier to email that to you and then approve it at next month's meeting and get it out? Uh, it be, well, can if we, you can, can, we, can we approve it now without actually seeing it? Well, if you read the list or if you read the dates and the committee agrees, you could, you could, you should prove it. You should approve it before it's mailed out. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I can, uh, if do you guys have interest in approving that and doing these conservation projects like we have in years past with the surveys, it's the same system that we uh, thought of in 2019 and utilized then. Yeah, I think we should move forward with uh, basically what Robert's done is uh, just pick dates following the same structure we already came up with, right? So uh, yeah, so May 8th, 2 p.m., um, May 22nd, 12 p.m. The uh, the end dates of the surveys are left open, which I think is a good idea just because, I mean, you know, it's spot dependent. Um, Robert brought up a really good point that we have to decide how many people we want to limit each survey to. Um, but those two days would be for the Big Spit, Libby River and Turner's Bar, June 12th and 19th, 
would be for Demas Battlegrounds in Jones Creek. October 2nd and 16th would be for Winnix Neck, Clay Pitts, Eastern Trail, and Jeans Point. And those are those tides are in the middle of the day. Um, November 13th at 10.30 a.m. would be Spurwink River and Nonsuch Point. <clears throat> and then uh, that takes care of all the survey areas that we need to do. And then he also chose six dates for crab kills and the crab trapping program running June 1st to October 1st, which is the same as it always is. So do we, do you guys think six crab kills is a good amount of crab kills for this year or. Um, so um, on the, on the crab kills, Nate, um, I just gave, so I gave a variety of six. So, um, some are Fridays and some are Saturdays, but I don't think that we need all six. I just, I was just given a mix of, yeah. um, you know, we can pick, <clears throat> we could pick three or four out of the, the entire list. I was just trying to give a variety of days. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Um, I wonder if we should do, do one crab kill earlier than that. Or do you, do you guys typically do them in August like that? So the problem, the problem I had was lining up, um, tides that were like Friday and Saturday lining up tides that were um, low tide was at dark. So that's how they ended up. I started on June. Um, I started sometime in June and it just, it just pushed me all the way till July until you could get those correct times. Yeah. That, that's why they, that's why I started um, July 30th. Um, I, I, like I said, I tried to get earlier ones, but the tides just don't line up with the weekends. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that'll be fine anyways. I mean, there's uh, plenty of options for people to get times. Um, so there's three, three weekends, July 30th and 31st, August 13th and 14th and August 27th, 28th. They're all those are the two segments and they're both nighttime crab kills. Does anyone have any ideas on Friday or Saturday would be better of a night? I would think people would be more likely to, to attend the Friday one personally. Yeah, I think I agree with that. <clears throat> um, so do we want to do like July 30th, Friday from nine 30 to 1230 August 13th, Friday from 8.30 to 11.30. And you could even do August 14th, the Saturday too then. Do both nights that weekend maybe. Or should we not have two nights in the same weekend? I can uh, pull up a tie chart. I feel like there's got to be at least one day in June that we could do. Do we um, – uh, you, you can like – get all of your time through surveys though right the the crab kills are just kind of an extra thing yeah between well crab trapping i don't think anyone will get their 12 hours in surveys i wouldn't imagine yeah so there's so there's basically um i think there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so there's 12 surveys um and you're only going to get uh, three, four hours max on a survey. So there's barely even enough surveys for every commercial license holder to even do one. Once, <laughs> once you add in, um, you know, either three people or a couple of them, you could do six people, but, but most areas are only big enough that you just need three people. Can I chime in on this real quick? So when we started, Nate said that, you know, Robert suggested we put a max amount of people on each survey. Last year we did. We we said five max. I just dug up the the sign up and it it said uh it was five people max on each survey. Yeah, he uh he brought up the good point that some areas it might be smart for us to, you know, have two survey teams like the big spit, you know, compared to doing like Gene's point. The bigs would probably be somewhere we could have two different teams if we wanted. What do you you need? I think three people minimum to do survey, right? Yeah, three people usually have uh, 
one guy that's washing the basket, counting the spat, one guy digging and counting clams, and the other guy holding the clipboard, um, writing all the information uh, information on the clipboard. Yeah. Um, let me see. I almost have a June tie tart right here. So really, you what what really needs to be done is you really either need three people on a survey or six people on a survey, and you just break off into two teams of three. Um, Are you saying if there's, if there's four people, one guy's not doing anything? Exactly. So it looks like uh, Friday, June 18th is an 11.32 p.m. low tide. Maybe we, uh, maybe we do that that night in, as a June date and then do one of the July ones and then the other two in August and do four crab kills. So you said June 18th? June 18th, yeah, and it's at 11.32 low. Don't we usually not even really see the crabs in full force till like the end of the summer? Uh, I think there's uh, that not true. I think they, st- I think there'll be quite a few around by then, but I mean, it might be smart to push it off. I just figured, you know, with the lack of other conservation events other than surveys that time of year, I figured it'd be, you know, prudent of us to offer some sort of conservation activity in June, maybe. Makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so, I guess, do those dates sound good? Do those four survey dates, we'll do four Friday nights? You mean crab kills? Yeah, the, the crab kills, yeah. So, it would be June 18th, July 30th, August 13th, and August 27th. Sounds good to me. Is anyone? Perfect. Perfect. Um, motion to approve the conservation year as stated and get that mailed out to everyone. A second motion that motion. To approve. All in favor? Unanimously approved, looks like. Cool. <clears throat> All right, well, I will get that out. Um, Do we want to... Do we have to do the surveys too, Nate? What was that? Don't we have to go over the surveys too? Yeah, I already said the survey dates. He, he wasn't in the meeting. Oh, oh, oh. He hadn't... He hadn't gotten oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's I think that's all set. Oh, I should be able to... Uh, I'll type that up from what Robert sent me, all that stuff. <laughs> and I'll send that over to you, Toady, sometime this Thank week. Thank you. That would be great. We can get it out sooner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've, we forgot to approve the uh, crab trapping too. Oh, you have to approve that separately. Um, yeah. So I heard of the conservation. So I, well, I mean, it's, it's, we're still going to put it on the, on the uh, conservation list. So we, we should approve it. I, I put on the, um, for crab trapping, um, you know, I think we should add a little note on there that says must sign up prior to trapping and receive a um, log sheet from Harbor Master. Because what's ha- been happening in the uh, last few years is, is people are just filling out a log sheet and saying that, that they're doing it. I think that they should have to sign up so that Randy's aware of, you know, okay, I got 15 people trapping, trapping crabs out here. Um, and he gives out the log sheet that says, you know, 2021 on it. Um, that way he has a list of who's doing it. Can, can I ask a question on, uh, spend, um, on the surveys? Are you going to have a lead? Will we know who the lead person is for people to sign up with? Do we, we normally have that, right? Yeah. So we're, we're going to, we're going to, I think we're going to have to have, um, I think we're going to have to have them worked on a little bit 
a little bit more. I don't know how to get all the lead people onto the surveys without, um, you know, usually when we have a, a public meeting, people come in and, and volunteer for it. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe we're going to have to like put a note on there to call Randy to sign up for surveys or. How did we do it last year? Cause we, we ran into the same thing last year and somehow people volunteered. I think it was just lucky that the surveys that got booked, everyone, at least one person knew how to survey. Honestly. Yeah, it just showed up and, and qualified. That's how I remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't think we really designated leaders in 2019 I'm checking my letter we just got lucky yeah i think i will i think it was that everyone kind of communicated with communicated with each other and like kind of figured out who they were going with and then a lot of people didn't even do them i guess because because at the end we said it wasn't required yeah and then everyone didn't I, I put on your sheet that i would um that i would volunteer to lead um, Libby River. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll obviously lead one too. So I guess we can put that on there. Yeah, all the letter said was survey projects. You must sign up in advance. There was no, um, lead person listed. I'll yeah. volunteer to lead one, but I just need to tag along with one of the earlier surveys so I can kind of get, um, acquainted with how to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's also important to put in that letter um, that there is, there is the survey procedure online that we use to follow that the experienced people already knew that, but it might be worth putting it in there that we were following the DMR survey procedure so that if somebody doesn't really know what they're doing, they just have to read the procedure. Okay. I, I can probably dig up pretty quick what the what dmr calls it yeah that's a good idea um <clears throat> looping back i do think it's a good idea to have a crab trapping sign up sheet and make sure the actual forms are distributed because uh it's kind of a crap shoot to track a form down sometimes when you can't bump into randy at the right time and catch him at the office with sheets I found it. Yeah, I just Googled it. It came up right away. So it's called the Soft Shell Clam Population Survey Field Guide. They're actually working on a uh, different survey method that's probably going to be accepted by DMR within the next couple of years. So well, for, the, actually... for the time being, they already have this one. So we, we might as well send people to this so that everybody's doing it the yeah. same way. Absolutely. Let's see if I can drop the link. Just uh, email it to me if you would, Matt. That would okay, I will do. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I should I should send it to somebody else to make sure that's how they've done it in the past too. I'm sure it is. So I can I can draft this I can re redo this um, survey sheet that I have and put on there how many how many people that we would need to survey each area um, and I can give it to you like that Toady if you want that would work and then maybe. Maybe when, when you mail it out, um, we'll put on there to call, call to be put on, on the survey list, just like it said before. Okay. We could even make a note if you have interest in leading a survey, I guess, you know, make that known. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of diggers who know how to do the surveys, I think, you know, which is why we didn't run into that problem in 2019. It's been the same survey for 35 years now, so. Okay. 
were we going to talk a little bit about like the the stakes like putting a survey stake in anywhere or i mean i think that's the only thing that like might not be in the survey procedure that we may want to consider but i don't really know how you go about doing that or you know if you need like mm -hmm. official approval from the dmr or something like that but I don't yeah know what so you think well, the official survey procedure says that the recorder shall locate a readily recognizable landmark to locate the first plot. So in some places, like, you know, there are landmarks, but other places, I think you have a good point. I mean, if there is a, if there isn't a stake, then how do you know where to start? I mean, I think that we could even as a committee just come up with map, like use aerial maps and just draw lines on the directions we want the surveys to go. And I think that with these supposed to be random stratified sampling, it might actually be a better thing to just have general tracks you're supposed to follow in the surveys than specific plots, you know, start here, move 10 feet. It might be better to just have those generalized areas and directions for plots. <clears throat> So it sounds like uh, this needs a little more work. Um, do you think that we can, if we make those changes and send you a document, will we have to re-vote on that? Or is, do you think we can make a few minor tweaks to it after it's approved? I think a few minor tweaks would, would be fine. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's better to get these out as soon as you can. So we wouldn't really be changing it, I guess, just like adding more specific details right. about leaders. Yeah. So you've already approved the dates. So. Yeah. 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 I'm just, I'm just going to add the number, the number of people, uh, people that we would need for each area. All right, cool. Well, uh, let's plan on doing that this week then. And I'll make sure I get that out to you by the end of this week so we can get that out. Nate, I just sent you an email with the survey procedure. If you could just look it over and, reply to it to it, whether or not it's the correct procedure then Tody will have the link <clears throat> yeah this not is the right one. yeah I didn't mean right now I just meant after the meeting yeah no I that that's that is the right one though I uh okay um so <clears throat> I guess that is it for old business on to new business. Do we want to motion to add the license number allocation to the agenda this month, or do you guys just want to do it next month? Does anyone want to motion that to discuss tonight, or I'll I'll put a motion to uh, add it to the uh, add license allocations to the agenda under new business. I noted that. Um... These actually should have been done, what, in February. So I just happened to think of them today and I was talking to Robert on it. Um, you set the license allocations that has to go to DMR and then back to the town council for approval. So we'll yeah. go behind on that. All right, uh, second. Yes, Two. second. All in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Will, was that a hand? Was that a... Cool. Um, so I guess, does anyone have any thoughts on license numbers for this year? Uh, I'm going to make a motion to uh, leave license numbers the same. I will second that, given that the way this whole year has gone, we have no new information. And um, I guess it's been sort of a mess. So I, I don't think we have any reason to increase or decrease the license numbers. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. I'll make sure I get the letter out to DMI tomorrow. Alrighty, awesome. Um, oh, I lost my agenda here. <clears throat> So update on the Vibrio control plan and Vibrio control plan and the steering committee. Um, Robert, did you learn anything interesting from that Vibrio class? Did you take that? Yes, I did. Um, 
So basically it, it only applies to cohogs and, and uh, oysters right now. Um, so it's, it's thought that or proven that the bacteria that develops in the, in the, with the Vibrio um, can be cooked out and where they, you know, they cook all soft shell clams. Um, it's not, it's not like a concern that they have for soft shell clams right now. So it only applies to oysters and quahogs. Um, you know, not, not saying that in a couple of years, things might not change, but, but that's pretty much it. All right. So Scarborough, uh, Scarborough river and Nunsuch river, um, are going to be added to the list for the, you know, high risk Vibrio area. So the only changes that will take place is unless if you take the course, um, you will no longer be able to keep or possess uh, American oysters, European oysters, or quahogs um, without having the certification on your state license um, in the town of Scarborough. So, you know, like say like a guy's out digging and he finds, you know, um, six quahogs. If he doesn't have that, if he doesn't have that certification, he can no longer take those quahogs off the off the flats. Same with picking up European oysters and stuff. Does that also apply to uh, surf clams? Uh, n- not that they, not that they said. Yeah, I took the, I took the class just uh, two hours ago, actually. And the, the thing about the surf clam, like, or really anything is basically it applies to anything eaten raw. So, I mean, I don't know who does, but in the class, they claim people are eating soft shell clams raw. Uh, and if you were to do that, it's uh, extremely high risk. Um, it's actually even more risk than eating like raw oysters because the way, you know, clams are harvested, they're sit, they sit on the flat for, you know, so long that they, they have a chance to get warm. And as they get warm, the, the virus like my multiplies greatly so you know it, it's pro i see it being a thing where it's just a matter of time until they're going to tell all clam harvesters that you're going to have to put all your clams on ice I, i'd be shocked if it's if it goes more than a year before that becomes the case but as of right now they're saying that clam, soft shell clams are safe because like robert said when when they're cooked it kills the virus but kind of seems like a bad strategy to me just a matter of time yeah well i guess that's good to hear that those regulations aren't affecting soft shell clams and scarber right now at least um thank you guys for that <clears throat> um so from the steering committee side of things um robert i had they had reached out to me and asked if you had any interest in joining that steering committee, which is basically, uh, I don't know. It it didn't look like we had many respondents to that survey from the uh, town of Scarborough. Looks like there was two people. Yeah. Me and Noah. I Um, I did it. I did it also too. You did it. Okay. I don't know. I might have done it the last couple of days. Then did anyone else do it? No, um, I tried to do it, but the it, by the time I signed in, it said it was already expired. So I missed yeah. the boat. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I think they got enough respondents from the other towns that it uh, made up for it. But I can uh, talk to you a little more about that later. Um, okay. Does anyone else have any interest in coming to those working group meetings and like hearing what has to be said about them? I think there's going to be one within the next month or so. I think. The second week of April, there's going to be a virtual one. And it, uh, if anyone wants to tune in, I'm sure the, pre- the presence would be appreciated and you probably learn something too. So I would recommend coming to that meeting if you have any interest. That's an invitation to everyone. <laughs> what, what do the meetings consist of? Um, so there's like, it's, it's basically, it's the Casco Bay Regional Shellfish Working Group 
So there's different stakeholders from every town. I mean, I think it's been Shabig Island, Scarborough, Yarmouth, I think Cumberland had someone come because they used to clam there and they can't anymore. And then it goes all the way up to uh, a lot of people in Bath, Freeport, that area. But just like talking about, you know, what their committees are dealing with right now and what kind of stuff they're trying to do, what kind of projects they're trying to do, how they're allocating their licenses. Um, There's been a couple different projects that have been started up. And one of them that the survey was for is, they got a bunch of grant money. So they're actually making a database that is going to have a ton of information on every town's municipal clan program. And that database is going to be like, they're going to basically like prepare documents for town councils. If it's requested to like, you know, basically just educate everyone and try and share the best practices. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting. So if anyone has any more interest or in that they can, definitely reach out to me. I've been dealing with that a lot and it's been pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> but I have a, uh, I actually have a meeting with a couple researchers, Marissa McMahon from the Down East Institute and a couple people from Manomet. And it's kind of, it's kind of cool. It's, it's a Sea Grant coastal conversations radio program. So it's a two hour thing. It's next week. And it should be a lot of good information from, you know, different shellfish committees around the state. So I'll have to uh, take some notes and report back on that. Cause it's gonna, it's basically just going to be a summary of all the soft shell clam research happening in the state right now in one place. So uh, if Scarborough's missing out on anything, I guess that's the best place to uh, find out about it. Um, that's pretty much all. If anyone has any questions, they can definitely reach out to me if they want to get involved more. Um, moving on, Noah, do you have any updates on the parking situation for us? Yeah, I do. Um, Don was nice enough to, uh, help me put together a problem statement with, uh, some budget information. And, uh, I, apparently, um, there was a, a part that I was supposed to uh, present in the coastal meeting i guess i did not get the memo on that but uh, i can present that i'm guessing most of you have already read it um you guys want me to go over it or what i can certainly do that <clears throat> um it might be helpful uh, to walk through the high points noah and uh, yep. just uh, one quick point on the uh the coastal folks, um, you know, they had some input uh, or some feedback on it. They had the same materials that we, we have in terms of the, the recommendations. Um, they were generally in favor of, of them, but I, I think I'd, it might be helpful for you to top, just top line some of the key points and I can be happy to fill in along the way. Yep, certainly I can do that. Can everyone go on mute, please? Thank you. Um, all right, uh, the first paragraph, uh, I started out with uh, just a high level presentation of what the problem was, lots of competition for parking. There's not a lot of beach parking, so we're getting a lot of overflow into the boat launch parking lot. I just outlined that. And uh, I mentioned that a lot of people are competing with us for this uh, parking because many of them know that there's not going to be any form of consequence. Maybe there's a slight risk of a parking ticket, but it's only 40 bucks, I believe. Anyway, um, the second paragraph was a proposal where, let me see, I presented two phases to a, uh, a two-phase solution, obviously. The first phase said, uh, let's improve our signage with clear and enforceable uh, statements that say parking by permit only all other vehicles and trailers will be ticketed $150 May 1st to November 1st 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. so basically the warmest half of the year um, and I only did 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. with a note saying all trailer sections still cannot allow uh, vehicles to park in them um, you know one behind the other the second phase was 
as we phrased it, more stringent signage saying parking by permit only, all other vehicles and trailers will be towed at owner's expense, May 1st through November 1st, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So essentially the exact same thing, except instead of a parking ticket, uh, it's gonna be a tow. And again, I've said that uh, in all trailer sections, vehicle parking without a trailer should still be banned as it is now. Um, and then I also put a bullet in here, which had said that there are two single parking spots at the east end of the commercial trailer section. Uh, that's opposite of where the co-op is. And I said that these have to be uh, deleted or converted to commercial trailer or truck spots or converted to one trailer spot and one truck spot. Um, that way we don't have uh, visitors coming in, parking in that one spot on the east side and then attracting uh, 10 or 30 more visitors to park next to him. Uh, and I did also include in the first paragraph, uh, no, I believe it was the second paragraph. Yeah, uh, this includes the dirt parking lot as well. There is signage there saying that that is red parking pass uh, required. And generally it's filled with visitors. Uh, and so we're gonna have the signage added there as well. Uh, let's see. On the second page, I did get some uh, late breaking budget figures in. Don, I don't know if you want to uh, talk about this, um, but I did get a uh, current balance. Uh, it says as of January of 21, we have $17,550 as, as the current balance. I don't know if, what it is as of March of 21. Uh, now, Don, I know you had said there was also feedback from uh, Coastal. Yeah, I might chime in here if, if you allow. Um, yep. So Coastal, Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee have generally been in the advisory capacity of suggesting the use of funds. Um, there was a, a working waterfront reserve account that was created after the pier was built uh, back in 2012. Um, and it originally had something like uh, $53,000 in, in it. And then the council authorized an additional $23,000 to, uh, for work on floats. So since then, there've been a couple other revisions to that fund that have included, uh, you know, authorizing parking lease revenues at the co-op. This is we were around the, the time of the co-op sale in 2019 um, uh, to be deposited into this working waterfront fund. And then additionally, unspent clam seed monies went into it. Uh, and then the police department um, had a, a marine resource transfer to the pier reserve. So I'll include apparently there have been some recent repairs made to the cranes and uh, Randy's going to help us with getting an update on that. So so there was discussion. This was an agenda item for the, the Coastal Waters and Harbors Committee. Uh, but then they went into their feedback was, I think, in general, they liked the proposal. They, uh, they knew that you were going to have a discussion about it and a, potentially a recommendation on it this evening. But they brought up the topic that, well, you know, we're not really collecting parking fees um, consistently uh, uh, in, the, you know, in that area, the parking area down at the point, down at the co-op. Additionally, we haven't really designated the 25 spaces or so that uh, that that Vinny uh, and, uh, you know, and, and the co-op are paying, uh, uh, you know, for. Uh, so there was a general feeling that they, they there needed to be improvements with, uh, they like the part about improving the painting and marking and signage, and generally they were in favor of the first phase but they asked questions about parking. Um, and then they didn't really get into a discussion about the second phase uh, towing if the parking was not successful. Uh, the final point I'd make is that uh, Vinny had suggested for parking, uh, we ought to not have to rely on attendance, maybe you just have one attendant there, but to do something uh, like using a, a, par a passport parking app or something like that, that is fairly straightforward. So that was their feedback. They're, they're fully prepared to support whatever comes out of this committee, uh, you know, at this meeting or subsequently. And 
you know, if there are additional funds that you're seeking, then that, that is something that, you know, I'd be happy to take, to bring before the council and the timing on this, you know, is pretty good because they're moving into budget season. So that, that's kind of the, that, that's sort of what they had to say and sort of the other, uh, the other pieces I would add. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, if there's ever another time that I can um, talk to these folks or attend another meeting that would be appropriate, please feel free to call me as well. Um, let me see. I know as far as the, the budget goes, you're certainly the expert on what I should do with budget figures, at least compared to me. Um, but if I look at, if I look at this proposal, um, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't say whether or not they've been collecting uh, fees for boat launch passes that I figured they obviously should be collecting consistently. Yeah, and I, and I don't have updated figures on that. So that's an additional detail that I, I will try to get. I committed to the coastal that we do that and we'll certainly, you know, put that before this committee. Um, so I, I, you know, the point is there, there's this whole, uh, there seemed to be a lot of uh, a sense of urgency around parking. They didn't like the idea that, uh, you know, um, somehow it seems like funds have been mixed with with parking for uh, Herd Park and, and there, they wanted some clarity around, you know, how this fund has evolved, but there, there was generally an interest that it be rededicated for the purposes of, of uh, capital improvements to to the pier and and, and repairs, um, and in general, uh, this fund is not supposed to be used for operating expenses like staffing, for enforcement, and so forth. Okay, uh, certainly, um, you know, parking tickets are a lot more expensive for us to operate with because you know we pay or someone pays for a attendant to do that, but if if we tow, the person getting towed pays for that. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be quite a difference in cost. Uh, I did not think of that, unfortunately. Now, I will say, um, could, could we get a little bit more details on this herd park thing? That's that's something that's been brought up by, uh, I believe, Vinny as well. And uh, that was at the last meeting. And are, am I hearing that there's going to be a reduction in parking where it's already very scarce? Yeah, um, you know, I uh, sat on, on a, I guess it was the February meeting, and uh, Todd Souza gave an update. And the, you know, the plan is really to make improvements uh, to the bathroom area and the concessions area to actually roll out some temporary decking that would go over out into the primary dune, and that the improvements, so called improvements to the lot, would involve a reduction of some 27 spaces uh, and potentially uh, traffic exiting. Um, onto uh, King Street opposite the overflow lot. Wow. Oh, man. Okay. I was thinking, uh, if anything, in addition in parking, but yeah, I, I haven't been over there recently. That's that's really too bad. So okay. Coastal gave me quite a bit of feedback on that, and I, I don't know what the next steps are. I haven't really talked to Todd about it, but that is definitely a you know a related factor to that general area. And I, be, I believe the, the co-op rent spaces and the overflow lot as well for valet parking and so forth from, for the boat, uh, for the bait shed. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel that nobody really, were they planning on getting any input for this or was it just kind of a rollout um, with whatever idea was had? I believe that the, the improvements to, to Herd Park had been circulating for some time. There were actually some neighborhood meetings, I think, a year or so ago. Um, so this has really just gotten picked back up. I don't really know the thing and next steps for that. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it. Uh, if, if there's any way for us to maybe uh, make ultimate suggestions, that would be a, a great thing for us to at least try for. I know that they're trying to do it for the best, but uh, I don't know if 27 spots is going to work well. Wait, um, can I ask you a question real quick? So Herd Park, um, we're talking the co-op parking lot? I mean, beach. that's the beach parking lot. Beach parking. So why are, I guess I'm just a little lost here. Why, 
why are we um what's the concern with the beach parking lot if we lose 27 spots i mean the, the how many spots are there like several hundred is the concern that uh, i think there are people are then coming i don't know the exact number so so is the main concern that those 27 people are now headed to the co-op to park yeah, I think that that view had been expressed, uh, Matt. I think additionally, um, uh, one of the revisions that were made to that working waterfront fund is that uh, uh, if there if, if there were uh, there was a surplus in boat launch revenues, that that uh, somehow went into the beach reserve account, which uh, covers Herd Park. Uh, so I need to get a little more detail on exactly where some of these funds, you know. Uh, are and have gone and what the current balance is but it was you know travis expressed a concern that he wanted to make sure that you know funds that were being generated or related to co-op and and to the you know commercial fishing folks down the point should should remain there but uh this uh this fund has gotten several several purposes added to it over time this water looks like reserve. It looks like Susan is in attendance and has a hand raised. I don't know how to how to answer that. Hey, Matt. There you go. Matt, it's Vinny. Can you hear me? Hey, Vinny. So, not going to hear you about a lot of people down here. If hey, Vinny, we're having a we're having a hard time hearing you. Can you? How about now? You got me now. Yep, got you now. All right. So, one of the concerns you talked about was why is there a concern? Well, it's because if you remove twenty seven cars out of Herd Park, they just go down to the Pine Point. Now you're driving in Pine Point, and then they find it a it's free, and b they're just going to take a spot. Right. You no. Know? Um, so the other thing is, is it's, you know, my wife has been to all four of those meetings down here. Um, it, really consensus to those herd park meetings, there's zero agreement with really redoing that overall, uh, overall with the people than the thing, you know, I just, just it, it wasn't there. The support was not there. People really complain about having the damn beach raked. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, when you guys are using the, the parking lot at, you know, at 96 King down there at Stern, you know, I, 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 I am, I understand you want your parking spaces for all of these things and all of that stuff. And, and you should have them. That's fine. But, you know, if there was paid parking down there and it was a high water, you know, at on a Saturday at one o'clock in the afternoon, and that was a revenue stream for the town, I, I've yet to see you guys dig clams at high tide. So, I mean, it just makes sense to, to go. I mean, that's, that's missed revenue and everything else. My customers are only there an hour. I, I you know, people are going to use that paper parking by the hour. That's how they operate. Anyway. So are you saying you're, you're in favor of the paper parking? Absolutely. Put the passport parking right to that place, and and, you know, and somehow have a have a workaround for the commercial fishermen, so that around for the commercial fishermen, get a passport, and you got to work around with me because I paid you know ten thousand dollars for twenty five spaces. I'm willing to work around it. I mean, I would think you guys would. It's just you know, it, we gotta gotta work together down here. I realize it's a small area, but you know, it's a big parking lot. It services a lot of people, but if the people weren't in there that camp out and walk to the beach for the day. And the only reason they're parking down there is because they don't want to pay $10 or $20 at herd park. That's the only reason. Why would you walk further? Now, maybe I'm opening up a, a can of worms here that I shouldn't be, but part of me is thinking, um, you know, an easy way to prevent people from just parking there and walking to the beach would be what about some of these restaurants in Portland that are, um, somehow incorporating the restaurant itself, saying that if, if someone does want to go to Stern, that uh, somehow that is involved with their their parking pass so that you have commercial people there that are actually working and then you have your 25 parking spots that you're entitled to 
but you don't have random people using up your 25 parking spots. Like what if there's in this passport app or which I'm not familiar with, but there's got to be a way to, to make it so that you can only get that spot if you are in fact going to the stern. Um, yeah, you can do something like that or you can make it, you know, there's lots of ways to make this work. I mean, <clears throat> you create zones <clears throat> within the parking lot, you know, that's what they do in Portland. They have zones in Portland. When you go in there, if you park at $3 Dewey's, it's zone something or other. If you park up on uh, uh, Exchange Street, there's another zone up there. I think that we should definitely look at a more sort of, I guess, I mean, I don't want to say complicated, but a comprehensive solution to this. Because for me, I mean, I'm, and I apologize for not really being able to uh, participate in the last meeting and, and, and like speak my, my part. But I like, obviously, this is a problem. Like, it, you know, it's really not good to be going down there to work and not being able to have a spot to park your boat and or park your, you know, car and your trailer. But like, honestly, you know, most any day between, you know, whatever the season is, May through November, you go down there and even on like moderately busy days, most of that parking lot, you, what you're going to see is like spots taken up, but then like the commercial trailer parking, if it's not low tide, they're empty. It's just that the days on the weekend where there was no attendant and no attendant who was, you know, really you know diligent like the guy that we used to have joe he was really good about you know making sure no one parked in those trailer spots but most of the time you go down there and those commercial spots are empty because it's you know either it's not low tide or um it's um you know i, I just i think it's 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 weird to go down there on a real busy day and see like the parking lot full except for the commercial parking lot because the tides at 5 a.m. So if we could figure out a, a, a way to make it so um, either there's more enforcement or there's sort of like um, a varied enforcement that allows people to park when we're not coming down there to park. I don't know how you do that, but maybe an app is, is, an, is like a potential solution for that, but. App for sure. I got to say, I'm not sure how much I concur with uh, telling visitors that they can park at a red spot. That is certainly going to need some work. Uh, maybe, maybe someone could change my mind on that. But to start out, we cannot simply say, oh, it's high tide. Go to the restaurant and park in a red spot. I have two quick questions. I, I'm just really trying to better my understanding of the whole situation. So, uh, first one's uh, for Vinny. Um, so my understanding, the 25 spots are, are floating spots, right? They're not, they're not like uh, 25. You can't point your finger to the 25 spots. It's just that it's 25 spots somewhere in the parking lot at any point in time. Is that correct? Right. And much like you guys, if those 25 spots are all packed with a beach chair and they went to the beach, what am I left to talk about? Right. No, I absolutely agree. So, so then my second question is, I don't know if any, if anybody has an answer for it, but it just seems kind of strange to me that, so we do have an attendant there that is charging people to launch their boats and effectively charging people to park their boat in a parking spot. But for whatever reason, that same attendant doesn't have the ability to ticket people using the spots that they're selling it's kind of screwed up, you know, so you got the, and I think it's because you got a community services worker who doesn't have the authority to write tickets. I don't know. Noah, maybe you know more about this than I do. Uh, yeah. He, he was like a, a very young guy. And first of all, he, the reason, the problem tends to be that when it's slammed and busy, he is selling people, you know, the, the parking pass for the day, just a day pass and he's in the shack, but you know, six Audis and two BMWs are pulling up uh, 30 feet away and filling up the red spots. Right. So but the, he's not the, two people. That launch attendant can't write tickets though, right? Am I, am I incorrect? That's something that Randy might know. Is he on? I think, he, I think he's muted. 
Most of them can't. The ones I'm familiar with, the ones I saw last year, they wrote a few tickets. So are they are they with the police department or are they with community services? Most of them were hired by it was kind of a messed up last year because they didn't start till late. Um, but they were hired by the police department. Okay. So it's getting back to Noah's plan here. Like, is there any way to get the, to get those people involved somehow with the, you know, obviously um, Vinny and the shellfish committee and all the other commercial fishermen kind of have a common interest here of trying to get people to stop using the, parking lot is a place to go to the beach and it seems like we already have an attendant there with the ability to write tickets like why aren't we jumping on that instead of trying to overcomplicate things For not to putting a sign the, summer, the attendant was only there from 3 to 6 p.m gotcha okay Hey, I have a uh, meeting at 7 30 is it possible for Robert the co-chair to finish the meeting Am I, is that is that possible Yes. I think all that's left after this conversation yes. is just set the agenda and join. So. It's that, that's fine. All right. Robert, you good? Yep, I'm good. All right. Thank you, guys. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Well, I will say there is one thing that me and Vincent do agree on here, and it is that uh, perhaps it might be time for us to put up a, um, a electronic – um, you know, the same type of kiosk that they have uh, in front of Bissell Brothers, for example, where you uh, pay and you get a piece of paper. And this is, we could talk about this later, but that would, you know, maybe be, you, they buy a parking spot for an hour or two hours or whatever they put into that kiosk. And maybe it's three to $5 an hour or maybe uh, 15. And that certainly could prevent people from going to the beach uh, at, at uh, the boat launch, because yes, that is certainly not ideal. I, I have to agree, um, and it, it is happening. There's, it's, there's, the parking is so scarce that people are uh, putting signs in their grass saying park here for $20, $30, and people are filling up their front yards. So it, the scarcity is absolutely true. To piggyback on that idea, I don't know, this, this may be creating a headache for Vinny, but you know, if you did that, maybe maybe it's something like the the people that are actually going to the restaurants present their receipts uh, to their server, and and then the the restaurant gets reimbursed for for the parking, so that so that Vinny's not getting paid or Vinny's not getting charged to have his customers park. You know, when he already owns those twenty five spots, that might be a good way of kind of getting around it, and you know, the commercial fishermen get a get a pass already. I'm not sure I quite followed that, but uh, yeah, I, I know the floating 25 can be a blessing or a curse depending on how the tourists well, no, are feeling. I guess the point is, no, you know, you, so you have it so that everybody pays, right? Okay. Yep. But the, but the commercial fishermen have a, they, they already have like, what do you want to call it? A subscription? Like, uh, so they're not getting charged. Uh, Vinny's customers would get charged, but the, they would be able to present it. Cause I've gone to restaurants where, you know, you pay for the parking, you present your receipt, the restaurant reimburses it, but then that costs the restaurant money. So then the restaurant has to get reimbursed from this app. Now, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a, uh, I guess a headache for somebody that has to figure that out, but it may be a good workaround because then uh, Vinny's left with his spots and we don't end up with a whole bunch of people that are just using this to go to the beach. Yeah, that'd be fine. I get what you're saying exactly. So it's it's uh you know it's kind of like pay here, and if you're if you belong at the restaurant, then you will get your twenty five dollars back. That's fine. That makes sense. Right. I don't. But the problem is that can't happen at Red Spot ever. Yep. So if it's if it's white spots, that's fine. No, and the dirt parking lot, absolutely not, because people are showing up there to to lobster. I don't care if it's high tide if they're lobstering, they still gotta go. Do you concur? Yeah, I, I, I don't uh, have anything to say. Can well, I speak? Yeah. I think the red spot should be available 24-7. You can't start giving away the red spots. 
Yeah. Oh no, I I agree with that 100. Uh, percent I, I just meant the other spots that are. Oh, that certainly, are certainly. But just I'm just saying respectfully. Uh, Vinny had mentioned how the red spots at high tide. There's nobody there, but well. Sometimes I check my crab trap at high tide. We can't be given trying to, it's too complicated to try to use the red spots when nobody's clamming there. It's just by, by red spots. Are we talking trailer spots? Yeah. Trailer and dirt. Spot. It's all red trailer and dirt parking lots, all red. And we need the signage, which I proposed to yeah, be. That means anytime we can go down there, unless there's another commercial guy there, we can park right there and go about our business. Right. Well, I don't. I don't see that being a problem for anyone because if you if you eliminate all these people that are just using it as a free place to go to the beach, then Vinny's not going to have any issue having places for people to park because there's exactly. so many. At the front door. You, you're you're absolutely right, and what it amounts to is just like you said, the, the attendant's not doing his job. He's just hanging around, look, staring at his phone, and that's what I. Yeah, that was the problem last year when we had Mr. Joe. Mr. Joe took care of it, did his job properly. And when he wasn't busy, he probably walked around picking up styrofoam cups. But the, the other folks, they don't do that. And this is what you got. Yeah. Thank Looks you. Looks like Vinny has a hand raise. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Oh, uh, it's probably still up. Sorry about oh, okay. that. But anyway, but so I guess what you guys are saying is maybe I just get my 25 mark 24-7. Well I, well, I was piggybacking on the, the app idea. And what do you think about the idea of having it so that, uh, you know, the, the whole method of people basically getting reimbursed by the restaurant, the restaurant getting reimbursed by the app? Look, man, I, I, I said this in the Coastal Harbor meeting and, and, and Don Hamill will tend to this. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a reasonable man. I meet people both, you know, at both ends. The, the thing of it is, is that, you know, I'm giving and it's up to everybody else to give a little bit here too. So, you know, is there's a parking problem down there and we're going to, and we keep making it worse. You know, we, we let them park out, you know, I leave the garage barbecue in the morning and I've seen as many as 17 cars parked on the street. And it's because they don't want people parked in front of their house. They live down here in Jones Creek drive. So, you know, I see where the parking shortage comes from. You know, I, I live and breathe down here. That's it. And, you know, I watch what goes on at Herd Park. I watch what goes on in the co-op. I watch what goes on everywhere, you know, and it's not an easy solution, you know, and we all know that. I mean, you know, Peter Angus parks in the sand. He's been parking there for 40 years down there. Um, you know, and Chucky gets along with, you know, with Freddie over there. He parks over there and digs out in Jones Creek. I mean, you know, and again, at the end of the conversation, we're talking about seven lousy days in a year that it really becomes an issue. You know, I was down there today, you know, and I was watching. I, I got it on film. I, let me show you where all you guys parked today. Robert, you were in the sand down there with uh, with uh, Peter Angus, you know, and Paul Erickson was up almost to the trash can up by the front, you know. And Ed Obar is over another way, pars crossways on the thing. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just, you got to let a little bit go. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I'm saying. We all do, myself included. Yeah, I thank still, you, Vincent. I, still, I do, I do agree with you that uh, it is certainly true that the parking is, it, it's definitely gotten out of hand and it's absolutely going to get worse and we do need to work together. Uh, I'm looking at the spots on Google Earth now, and if you have 25 of them, uh, I got to say, that's that's like at least half. And I know that if we have the dirt parking lot and the red trailer spots, that's getting pretty close to half as well. Uh, and then, you know, there's pretty much the the remaining white spots and the two rows of trailer spots that are yellow. Um, so yeah, you know, if, if we both say we want we want what we have, I, I agree. You know, there, that's there's not much left. That's absolutely true. And I think what Matt had said is we need to take the remaining white spots and say, yeah, those aren't free because it doesn't work. Right. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at here. I'm not I'm not saying at all. It's uh. 
let's all fight over Vinny's 25 spots. I mean, I can tell you, I've never shown up to the co-op without a trailer on my truck. There's a handful of days that I have. I mean, yeah. as long and as even the, then, that's what, that's what the red, the dirt parking lot's for usually. Right. So right. as long as every single one of those commercial trailer spots is, you know, is truly a commercial trailer spot and it doesn't go, end up going to somebody that wants to park the minivan there, then, and as long as there's some system so that Vinny's 25 spots aren't getting taken up by beachgoers, then I think everybody's happy. Well, so guys, what if you aren't a, a commercial fisherman and you aren't a restaurant goer and you live in Scarborough and you're a taxpayer and you want to drive down and park and watch the sunset or feed the ducks or something, you're going to, you're going to tell me that you're going to have to go down there and pay when it's, you know, seven o'clock you know, on a Monday, 7 p.m. on a Monday in, you know, September, you're going to have to go down there and pay uh, because, you know, this place isn't for you. I, I think that you guys need to kind of step outside of that, the idea, like, of the fact that, you know, yeah, we're commercial fishermen and, you know, we have uh, an interest here for, you know, uh, making money. That's great. But still, this, this is a resource that should be available to everybody. And if there's empty spaces, I don't think people should go down there and have to worry about getting a $150 ticket. I mean, I think that you need to have an enforcement guy like Joe. I think that that's the issue. Like we could explore an app maybe later if this thing doesn't work. But I think for now we should really look at, let's get someone who's qualified enough and is working on Saturday and Sunday and is down there like the guy, Joe, and he's like, he knows, okay, these guys are going to come. It's low tide in three hours from now. And I'm going to make sure that, you know, nobody's parking here in these red spots. But if it's, you know, seven o'clock and, you know, the tide was way earlier in the day, you know, and there's all of the empty red spots and somebody parks there to just like go and, you know, bird watch for 15 minutes, they're not going to get a ticket because this guy knows, Hey, like, you know, you know, 30 yeah. clam diggers aren't going to just show up on the dot. You know, I just, I think that there needs to be some discretion and some flexibility. And the only way to do that is with somebody who's a high qualified uh, person who's enforcing the, the rules down there. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, as far as the red trailer spots and the dirt lot, I still would say it needs to be very, very strict, but we did have the time limits on there, remember, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., I believe it was, in my proposal. Um, so are you saying that you do not concur with putting, um, making changes to the white spots, at least right now? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I can't really speak for, for the white spots necessarily. I think that you know, improving the signage is, is great, but it's still, for me, what it comes down to is enforcement and somebody who is qualified and has the discretion to be able to determine, oh, okay, somebody's parked in the, the red spots. They're all empty. They're not a commercial fisherman, but they're, you know, it's, they're not going to be competing on, on anything, you know, like that's really my, my thing is that I think that laws should be on the book to be enforced when they need to be enforced and otherwise, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I mean, that, that's my opinion on the way that laws should be carried out. If they're not, if, it, if it's not affecting anyone negatively, then there's no reason, reason that they should be enforced arbitrarily. But okay. yeah, I, I don't, think, I don't, I don't think like the laws say. need to be changed yeah. necessarily. Yeah. But. I was just going to just adding to the comments that have been made. Uh, I think it's it's was been well recognized by public safety that uh, uh, that the the and sorry I'm in a conference room the light turns off and I don't move around so but uh, the there is there is a feeling that last year's enforcement was was not successful and there are a number of reasons for it so. You know, I think this this year, Sergeant Thibodeau, I, you know, we've had him attend some meetings. He has reassured everybody that they are going to be, you know, folk, you know, spending, making sure they staff it properly and making sure it's going to be uh, managed properly this summer. So um, I, I don't really know what that's going to mean in terms of cost, but there, you know, there's a recognition that that was a miss and that that we will do better this summer. It also, it's also clear that we did not, uh, when Noah uh, and I were working on the, 
the suggestions here for improving the parking lot admittedly did not have a proposed solution for paid parking. You know, that that's clearly something that needs more work. Whether or not you need to go all the way to an app or you need to do something beyond the attendance, that's that's a key question. Um, so that's just what I want to add, thanks. Okay, thank you, Don. Um, so what, what I will circle back to here, a uh, very popular phrase these days is, um, we are just putting out a proposal on the red spots, that is the red trailer spots and the red dirt spots, and I'm fine with keeping it that way for now. And we can obviously come back to the issue of white spots because that is, uh, that's going to affect uh, Vincent a lot more than me, for example, but I know that it still matters. And I do acknowledge that uh, there was a lack of success last, last year, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to keep the proposal as is, Will, if you're okay with that. And it is about uh, just phase one, what we'd start out with is parking by permit only. All other vehicles and trailers will be ticketed $150 only May 1st through November 1st, the warmest half of the year, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You good with that? Um, well, I don't know. I, I'm, I still think that like, you're never going to have this type of an issue in May or June or September. I still think that it only really happens uh, on the weekends um, in the full blown summer. And uh, like I'm, I'm in support of the, the idea behind it. Um, and like, I think I'm in support of it as it stands with the consideration that those who are enforcing those, those rules and giving those tickets uh, are well aware of the situation and aren't gonna be giving, you know, if somebody's parked in violation of those rules and they're the only car parked there and there's, it's dead high tide that they won't like, I, you know, even though they are technically in violation of the law I would hope that they wouldn't get a $150 ticket um, because I think that it just gives a bad name for Scarborough and for, you know, us as a community. Um, I don't really know. I don't, maybe that's not how the law works. And, 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 and if it's on the books, then the police are just going to do that. But that's how I feel about it. I'm, I'm willing to support it. If, if we can kind of get an assurance of uh, the discretion that's used for that enforcement. Um, but yeah. So, okay. uh, Don, what are you thinking? Well, I, I think you probably need to make some sort of um, <clears throat> proposal and then, you know, some sort of vote, vote on that. Uh, if you think you're ready as a committee. Uh, so that that's the, you know, that's the main point here. And I think the, the other, the other things are, I think to be clear about what you feel you can get into place. Uh, and I kind of agree with the comments that have been made about being able to use utilize discretion. I did have a question for you, Tony. If does this is this if they make changes, if they make changes to the rules for parking down at the co-op, is this does that go in the traffic or, ordinance or is that not an ordinance item? Actually, they'd have to make the recommendation, and it would be up to the council to make those changes. So really all, yeah, so we, we can't make any changes. We can just- make They can make the recommendations, but it's up to the council that it would make the amendments. I would just like to make a comment real quick to Will's point that, you know, his point about the recreational people that want to come down and use the lot, I agree. We, sh we shouldn't be charging them. I guess I, I kind of uh, overlooked that. I mean, if somebody wants to come down and eat their sandwich and what, look at the lobster boats and, you know, there's got to be something in place for that. We can't just- we can't just say, yeah, sure, you can come eat your sandwich, but it's going to cost you 20 bucks. Like that's, I'm not at all trying to say that, um, but that's part of what's complicating the situation so much. Yeah, Matt, that's white spots. We're, we're, we've accepted that we cannot figure out the white spots in today's meeting. Uh, that's probably going to be a future issue. This is just red spots now. Right. But we were talking about the white spots earlier, at least I was. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. That's Okay. So, so I've got a question, Tony, just a procedural question. So would it be helpful for the for uh, Noah and I to come back and to try to get the feedback that we've been given uh, and, and propose an order for the council that that the committee could recommend, this committee could recommend? Would that be helpful? Yes. 
Yes. And uh, somebody's got somebody's got background noise going. If you could put if everybody could put themselves on mute, they know how to do that. I, I don't know what what that's coming from, but um, so I and I don't know if that how Noah and others feel about it. I, I think you need to you know, need to hear from the rest of the folks in the committee, but that might be helpful. It's something very specific. Uh, the proposal, you know, is not really in finished form. That's not something that could go, you know, this in this shape directly to the council. Okay, so we could we could add it to the uh, we'll add it to old business on next month's agenda. Then I will say, if we continue to kick this can down the road, it's going to be uh, April, early April next time we talk about this. So borderline too late already. I really don't know about waiting any longer than we have to. Do we have any, do, do we have any, oh, sorry, go ahead, Robert. Um, do, do you want to make a motion to put it to a vote then, Noah? If I can, I'm just the first alternate. Um, well, Nate's gone. So Nate's you, gone, so you're filling in. You're, you're a full okay. member. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay, do you want to do you want to read your motion? So, aloud? can you be can you be more specific with your motion? So, you're making it a motion to to send this proposal to the um, town council to consider adopting the changes. Um, Yes, in phase one, uh, just signage improvements uh, to only the red spots uh, for an increased fine of $150, but there's a sign. And remember, these are just red spots. So this is just spots that tourists should not be visiting. Uh, the white spots, we're still leaving alone. So the, the phase one says improved enforceable signage, which clearly states parking by permit only all other vehicles and trailers will be taken to $150 May 1st to November 1st. But it doesn't say like only at the commercial trailer spots. Uh, in the above uh, paragraph. Okay, so the commercial trailer section. So improved signage for the commercial trailer section as well as the commercial dirt parking lot. So we're just talking about the red trailer spots and the dirt parking lot. Yes, just the red. We're not talking about anything else. Okay, so so make make your motion and just put all that in it. No one will we'll, we'll hold it to a vote. Okay, I make a motion to put to vote uh, my proposal to make a recommendation to the council, um, recommending that if the commercial trailer spots and the dirt parking spots, um, we vote for my phase one proposal stating improved enforceable signage which clearly states parking by permit only all of the vehicles and trailers will be ticketed 150 dollars may 1st through november 1st 8 a.m to 5 p.m with a note that all trailer sections um, will still have vehicle parking banned if there is no trailer behind that vehicle okay does somebody want to second that motion i'll wait second it wait um so oh. wait, you just said, so like if I, even though I have a commercial pass, if I went there and parked without a trailer, I'm not like protected and I could get a $150 fine. Well, you'd be expected to park in the dirt lot based on this suggestion, Will. Okay. So you can still park without a trailer, but you'd have to be in the dirt lot. Okay. And do we have like, does, um, I don't know. I guess like I'm still kind of uncertain about voting for this just because um, I'd like to like get someone who is an enforcement authority to kind of discuss like how this goes about. Like they have to give a $150 ticket or can they give like, a, you know, a $30 ticket or I just like I'm hesitant to be in support of this because of just not hearing from, I guess, uh, a parking enforcement expert or someone who knows more about this. So I don't know if we can get any. any but well, I, I was having the same thoughts, but it, we're only talking about the red trailer spots. And the dirt spots. 
So yeah. it's none of the other spots. Yeah, I, I know. And, but it's still, I, I still feel like, I mean, what if you park there and there's no other, I mean, like a lot of times I'll park there and there's no other spot that's taken up by any other cars. Um, and I'm just kind of, I don't know, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I can't really, I'm not really in support of it just because I feel like, uh, I, I think that if I'm in support of it, if it's just like an option for the police to do, um, like it gives them those tools to enforce it. But if it's like, I'd like to just know more like comprehensively about how this would, would go about being enforced. And I know it's just a recommendation for the council, but I still feel there needs to be like a little bit more discussion. Like I said, maybe someone could chime in who knows a little bit more about law enforcement. Um, well, I'm sure you could actually definitely talk to uh, Steve Thibodeau about uh, any form of gamesmanship that they could engage in. And I'm sure that he's the expert on that. I know that as far as harsh parking laws, I, I in Portland, I've certainly come out to uh, a, a spot that my car used to be in and now it's not there. And yeah, it's, it's not awesome, but uh, it, it happens. And now this is just a parking ticket. But again, Will, this is just a suggestion. So maybe even the council could uh, uh, counter. Uh, Don, can that happen? Well, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you could, uh, it's, this is not in the form of an order yet. It would have to be put into the form of an order. And then even after that, um, it can be amended. It could be amended by the council. I think one thing, so two things we should try to strive for. Is this clear enough that you think you can move it out of committee, number one? And number two, is that something that you believe that we could get the support of the other committee, coastal you know, coastal uh, waters and harbors, uh, as well as public safety, the folks that are going to have to, you know, going to have to uh, enforce this. So I'd say, provided we could do that, I'm pretty sure you could get it in a form that the council could make sense of and might not have to amend. But that's that's not where it is right now. So, so Tony, can you do you have a suggestion for what form that should take uh, in terms of a vote for the committee? Well, if they approve Noah's uh, recommendation, we can work it into a uh, order for the council. I can do that. That's not a problem. But I will tell you, I was looking at the schedule of fees and the highest penalty for uh, a parking violation is for a handicap parking and it's $120. So right now a parking ticket is 80 and if it's paid within 30 days, they pay half that. So 150 is not even, I'm, I'm just looking at the schedule of fees right now. And a tow is um, 80 during the daytime and 90 during the nighttime. Okay, so you're saying that I would have to have this edited to a different dollar amount? No, 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 you can, no. Bring, you can bring forward what you, you did. I'm just, I'm just giving you an example of what, right, what currently the schedule of fees have, has in it. Okay. I, uh, okay. I will still concur with my previous motion. Okay. Hey, uh, Matt, you second that motion, right? Yeah, I, I second it because, um, you know, I, it, I do have that part of me that agrees with Will if, if there's nobody there and, uh, you know, the parking lot's empty and, and uh, Southern Maine Car Meets wants to have a whole bunch of cars down there and do a car show at eight o'clock at night on a Wednesday, like, by all means, uh, you know, I, I don't care. Um, I'm a little hung up on the discretion thing because I, I, I'm not really too familiar about that, but uh, I support it because something needs to be done. And I'm mainly in support of kicking this up a notch to the uh, town council and hoping that maybe they uh, have, you know, they're going to take Noah's proposal here and, realize there there's a huge problem and maybe they're not going to take the exact the exact suggestions and wording and signage but but it it's a step in the right direction and i don't have a better suggestion um and and there's a serious problem something needs to be done about it so i'm supporting it purely for for that reason um you know i i would hope that the town council would acknowledge the same uh issue that will brought up that 
that there are times of the day when, you know, we, this isn't a concern and we shouldn't be ticketing people for it. Um, I don't know how to handle that. I don't really know if any of us do, but, but I would think somebody in the town does and the town council is a better chance of getting a hold of that person than we do. So for that reason, I support it. Um, I, do I think it's going to get passed without being changed? Probably not, but it's a step in the right direction. Okay. Um, so we'll, um, where's Paul? Go ahead. Go ahead, Robert. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I didn't know you knew it. Um, now we're watching you, Paul. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, my input on this would, would be, um, you know, this is covered under the uh, working waterfront uh, covenant. So these spots have been designated to fishermen through somebody else also. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm in favor of, of the proposal. Um, somebody's already, you know, realized that space was an issue that's why this this covenant was made um and i think that the uh if if vinnie's given the town ten thousand dollars for 25 parking spots he should have those spots available to him um from the day his restaurant opens to the day his restaurant closes all day long the town already sold him the spots they need to honor what they sold them. Right. Um, they can't sell them spots and then turn around and say anyone could park there when, when he just put a $10,000 check in their hand. Um, I think that they need to work on that. Like, you know, when you pull in uh, places in Portland and it says, uh, uh, you know, parking only for main hardware, you, you know, they paid for those spots too. And, you know, same, same, same difference. Even if they honor half the spots that they give them uh, all day long, you know, they got to do something. Um, so uh, we'll uh, all in favor for Noah's proposal. Um, I didn't see the other side. It's unanimous. unanimous. Okay. So if I may, just to confirm, so Tody and I will work on language for this. We'll make sure to try to get specific about which spaces we're talking about and the number of spaces. We'll also try to do the same for the uh, for the dirt parking lot to, to make sure that uh, these spaces will be confirmed for use for commercial fishermen and that it will be enforced accordingly. We will also get input from um, Sergeant Thibodeau and public safety, uh, and I'd also suggest we run, you know, we uh, having the support of the Coastal Harbors uh, Committee would be would be useful, um, and we can get this to the council hopefully in a form to to approve in early April, you know, first or first or second meeting in April. Um, and then the, the only other thing I'd add, we haven't talked about money, but in the meanwhile, I'll go back and look at the budget and find out that it's very likely there's going to be associated costs with. Uh, repainting the lines, signage, and so forth, so forth. So we'll probably need to get some sort of estimate for that for the council to know what what the associated funding would be required to, in order to implement this. Okay. Yeah, I would also like to add to that. You know, we should make sure there's something in there saying that the the number of spots doesn't get reduced because um, I, I know the last time it was painted, the the town had a engineer redo the the parking and it. It, it didn't it did not improve anything okay hey match match should i potentially uh do a revised version of this uh with potential references to the zoning ordinance well it kind of sounded like uh, i mean maybe hopefully i'm not speaking for don but it kind of sounded like don was headed that direction 
Hey, hey, Noah, we can, Tony and I will come up with a draft and we'll work with you on it to make sure that, it, you know, and we can also socialize it, you know, one-on-one -on -one with folks, you know, on the committee. We're, we're not proposing we're going to be deliberating, you know, not in the public realm, but they're, they're, you know, we'll get this in a form that we'll be able to execute. Um, so that's, you know, I think Tony and I can come up with a draft probably, you know, uh, before the week is out. And, and then it's going to be subject to amendment and discussion, um, you know, when it comes before the council. But I'd be happy to sponsor this on behalf of both both committees. Thank you. And yeah, please do invite me to any other meeting that I'm missing. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think that's it for new business. Um, so we'll move on to... Uh, set the agenda for next month. Um, is there is there any other um, comments from the committee? Go ahead, Paul. I asked uh, Randy about, uh, we spoke about the getting some crab traps, just for when it comes time to crab, for crab trapping if, I mean, maybe everybody's going. I, I have one, but you can't expect people to do their time if they don't, if, if they were going to crab trap and they there's no traps available that's all like i say i i have one but i don't know if there's any of the newer people or there's any we we had talked about it but then we that's all i was wondering how that was coming thank uh, you we can we can put that on new business yep that's fine for, for next month and uh um we can discuss um, what we want to move forward with that. Maybe we can get, maybe Randy can get a head count of what he has available for traps. Um, and then we can go from there, maybe vote on the number of maybe getting a few more or something. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the committee? Yes, I do have one uh, license renewal. Uh, I'm having some confusion. So can I, can I come in and submit my paper or is that, do I have to send it to the Scarborough Town Clerk's Office, P.O. Box 360? No, you can come in. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Toady. Yes. Uh, um, the email that I sent you today that we talked about, should do I need to put that on the agenda to have that, to, to get that approved? With regards to Ed? Yes. Yeah, um, it probably wouldn't hurt. Okay. I mean, um, as we discussed, it's it, it probably yeah, it probably wouldn't hurt to okay. put it I on think, the next agenda. Yeah, I don't. I, think I don't know if have... everybody knows or not. Okay, I'll I'll just briefly explain it, uh, just so everyone knows. But I'm going to put it on the agenda for a vote for next month. Um, so Ed Blanchett, okay. um, his uh, his wife is is. Is um, going through a major uh, medical issue right now, so he's not going to be around for uh, quite a while. Um, and when she does get her her surgery that she's waiting for, she's going to have another six to eight months recovery. So he won't be around um, potentially for the entire conservation he's season. So um, I want to put on the agenda to uh, waive his hours for this year, um, where, whereas he won't be around. It would be due to a medical. Do we really have to put, is that not something we can take care of right now? I agree. Just vote right yep. now. If you I, want, yep. You I can mean, I, I'd make a motion right now to excuse his, uh, his conservation time this year. I second it. Hold, hold on, hold on. Um, we're gonna make a so we're gonna make a motion to add it to the agenda first, Matt. Okay, I make a motion to add um, con uh, Ed Blanchard's conservation time for 2021 to the agenda. Do I get a second on that? Okay, Paul. Okay. All in all in favor. Okay. Yeah. And I make a motion to excuse Ed Blanchard's conservation time this year for 2021 um given the certain 
circumstances. I second it. All in favor. Unanimous. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to set the agenda for next month, and then we'll we'll adjourn. Uh, so we're going to have call to order. Those present, approval of minutes for March 9th, Harbor Master Report, Council Liaison Report, Old Business. Um, item one is going to be Pine Point Parking Lot. Um, but, uh, then we're going to go to new business. Item one on new business is discussion on purchase of more crab traps. And then set agenda, public comment, and then adjourn. The only, uh, for this evening, the only one that is, is uh, in the public is uh, Vinny and Susan. Uh, Vinny or Sue, do you, do you guys have any? Uh, well, actually, um, let's approve the, the minutes that I just, uh, the, um, the agenda first. Make um, a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor. Okay. Unanimous. Um, item nine is public comment. Does Vinny or Sue have any more to say? Yes, you can take yourself off mute. Here we go. Um, no, just that, you know, I, I understand everybody is in this thing together and we're all trying to do it. So I don't want, uh, I just have to stand my ground or I get run over. So I, I hope everybody understands that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm no different than you guys are at the end of the day. So, you know, let's just work it out. You know where I am. I'm in one of three places all day long, every day. So, you know, hunt me down. Okay. Thank you, Vinny. Um, okay. So we're going to, uh, let's see only public. Okay. So we're going to move on to, uh, Adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Okay. Have a good month, everybody. Thank you. Oh, uh, next next month, uh, isn't it going to be low tide, the meeting? Maybe we shouldn't have it. You wanted a different day? Well, <laughs> what do you, hey, Bobby. I mean, I thought I looked at the chat, and I thought next month it's going to be well, yeah, it's still going to be 630 at night, though, so. Okay, you know best. Bye. Right. Good night. <laughs> okay. okay. Take care, everybody.